What's up, beautiful people? It's about 7.30 p.m. in Maui, and I'm about to run the Maui Marathon tomorrow. So I'm here. We have to leave at 2 in the morning to go get to this drop-off zone where they're going to take us on a shuttle to the start line. But there's a whole bunch of stuff that has to happen first, so we need to get there at like 2.30 in the morning, which means I'm getting up at 1.30 to pound some oatmeal and then get myself ready and get everything there and then head over to the shuttle. It's nuts. I've been training for this for a really long time um, and it feels weird that it's finally here but Maui's gorgeous and it's been so much fun already and I'm ready. I'm ready to get it over with but also to enjoy the run and enjoy the people and the beautiful place. As a lot of you might know, I'm releasing a song on the 28th, which is in like five days. And this song that's about to come out is the first of a set of songs that I really, really care about. I went away for a little bit after I put out my last EP just to kind of recenter and refocus everything um, musically and personally and mentally, all of that. And I think I know so much more about what I want to do creatively and how I want to communicate my message and how better to put my feelings and my stories into lyrics. This first song is really where I think all of that came together for the first time. Um, it started off, it was something I just wrote in my bedroom and I didn't think anybody was ever, ever going to hear it. And then all of a sudden um, I, I slipped the voice memo into a set of things that I sent off to my label and you know thinking they would just kind of ignore it and it turned out to be their favorite and they were like why were you sitting on this and so now um, you know this story that is very personal to me and very I thought nobody would ever hear um, especially in sort of a public view now I have to put it out there and, and find a way to communicate this story and it's not like I'm I say I have to it's not like I have to I want to I do want to share it I just never thought that it would get out there so it's an interesting feeling but I figured I would let you guys in on why it's so important to me and a little bit of background to the story behind 18. When I was 14 I went to a boarding school for a high school and it was for soccer it was like this sports training school. They had a bunch of other sports as well, but I went there to play soccer so that I could go play in college, hopefully. Um, and that environment was really weird. And I know there are some people from that school that still follow me and speak to me and, and listen to my music and stuff. And I think everybody who went to that school can attest. It was a very unique experience because it's it's kind of like you know, those, those high school years are very formative years where you're learning a lot about yourself and you're having your first relationships and all this stuff. And mine was kind of in the context of this very strict boarding school system. It was the sort of thing like if you were off campus, you had to sign out and they had to know exactly where you were, or who you were with. If you wanted to get in somebody's car, it had to be, you know, tons of paperwork, all this stuff. It was just very, very strict. And all of the punishments for these things, if you broke the conduct, were really serious. It was like expulsion or suspension or whatever it was. And nobody, it was really hard to be a normal kid in this environment. But that's also what you were kind of sacrificing for training and working on your craft or whatever. So what that also entailed was it made it really weird for couples. And there were a lot of couples at my school, especially like first girlfriends, whatever, a lot of like really serious things. It was not easy to spend time with your significant other because if you were doing anything that even remotely broke the conduct, you'd be getting caught. And not, not, not only would you be getting caught, you'd be getting caught by like your history teacher or some whack shit like that, which, actually happened to me once, but in separate conversations, and that's not the story. My senior year at that school, I started dating this girl, and we were really serious, and we had plans to take it into college and to, to talk about the We talked about the future all the time, the whole thing, whatever. So we had found a bit of a loophole in the system. My parents wanted to watch me play my games and stuff, so they had like a little place off campus, 
And because of that, they also had a car there where I learned how to drive and stuff like that. We, we worked out a situation whereby I could do that. So I kind of had a car, um, but I was super strict, not allowed to drive anybody else. We found this loophole around it where if we wanted to hang out outside of the context of the school, we had a pickup spot where no would, nobody would be looking and I would drive out there. I would say I'm going to go, you know, be at the school, pick her up in some nondescript location and we'd go drive out. Knowing that the punishment for this sort of thing was really serious for both of us, but it felt like it was just the most important thing in the world to have our own time. The inspiration for the song is this one night we did that same routine, same everything, went and picked her up and we drove out. And this time we went out much further than we had gone before. And we just kept driving because it was great. It was a beautiful night. There were no issues. It was, we had plenty of time to get back. We pulled up to this field and the school that I was in was in a place called Faribault. So if you hear that in that first line, in some field in Faribault, we pulled up to this old kind of unused soccer field in the middle of nowhere. We put some music on and we were just hanging out. Then it's getting close to the time that we have to go back and all of a sudden, and it's really dark outside too, so we can't see anything that's going on. All of a sudden, I go to start the car and it dies. Go to start it again. I'm like, oh my God. And we may have maybe, you know, we're maybe 30, 40 minutes away, something like that. It might have been, I don't know how many, maybe 30 minutes away, but we're rapidly closing in on this sign-in time, which means expulsion for both of us. So then we go outside, we're like, all right, I need to look. Let's, let's see what's going on. I go outside and it is just the most absurd blizzard you have ever seen in your life. And we had no idea that it was going on. We had music going on, we couldn't see outside. And it was like a hurricane level blizzard, the craziest thing I'd ever seen. We ended up having to call somebody to come out and save us from that place. And I just left the car and we drove back and had to, basically, she, she actually missed her sign. It's funny, now I'm telling this, if anybody works at this school who's now seeing this, I'm sorry, you can't punish me in this in retrospect, but I'm coming clean for all of this. We ended up actually missing the sign in time, but her friends went into her bed and pretended to be her, and they set up her shoes in the bathroom and all this crazy stuff, and we managed to sneak her back. But then she got to the building, and I had to get out of there quickly so that security didn't see me. So I go away, she goes, tries to go in, but the building is triggered by an alarm. So she waited in a bush for like an hour in, in a blizzard. And eventually she managed to get a hold of somebody in town, another person that didn't live in the dorm, she managed to get a hold of somebody in town and stayed with them for the night. And I ended up having to go back out with my dad to go start this car again. We jump started the car where we were and I drove it back and gave some excuse that was like, you know, I was helping somebody look for their cleats or something. And then we met the next morning and it was just like, holy shit. I cannot believe that we just did that. I look back on that memory very fondly, but also I feel a lot older than I did then. But at the same time, I feel the exact same way. I'm the same exact person. And I think back on that time, you, know, you don't realize when you're in that sort of very special moment until you're not in it anymore. And I was just thinking about that and thinking about how the rest of that relationship went, which was we dated into college and then the distance kind of got to us and it felt like it was all over in just an instant when what felt like just yesterday we were in a, some broken down car in the middle of some random ass field and that was the only thing that mattered. And so my aim with 18 is for people who are past 18 or older than 18 for you to maybe look back on that period of your life 
fondly and nostalgically and think about those sort of memories that once meant so much to you where it felt like the whole world was in your hand. And also for people who are currently 18 or younger than 18 or in those sort of periods to recognize these moments you're going to be looking back on forever and thinking about. And they're going to be very special to you, whether they're good, bad, or they feel like it's the entire world or it feels like nothing at all. Chances are you're going to be looking back on it and thinking about how magical that was. I hope you guys love the song so much. I'm so excited to share it with you. And uh, I had a blast writing it and making it. And I'm so excited to share all the new music. It's going to be awesome. Wish me luck on this marathon. I guess by the time that I'm posting this, I will have already ran it. So we'll see if I'm still kicking it and alive and everything. But I love you all so much. Thank you for the support as always. Peace out.